Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning May 11th, 2020. Happy belated Mother's Day. I launched this right before Mother's Day, so <laughs> happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. And mom, happy Mother's Day. I love you so much. I wish I could be there with you. The gift is coming. Etsy is taking forever to ship things, but it's coming, okay? <laughs> and of course, I'll call you on Sunday. So um, let's get into it this week, guys. First and foremost, uh, this seems to be working, so I will make this announcement again. Uh, first of all, thank you to everybody who gets a personal reading with me and you're trusting me with that. And also, um, you know, I've been saying in the past couple of weeks, these readings go deep as long as you're open to it going deep, okay? Angels will not go against your free will. They will present to you whatever it is that you are ready to hear. But as I've been saying, they go deep. So just be aware of that. If you do want to get a reading with me, just go to angelsouls444.com. I also want to address my denim jacket. <laughs> I know I've been wearing, I, I pulled this out because it's like, it's just right there and it's like an easy go-to because I have a tank top underneath this and whatever. I just wanted to put a jacket over it. And I was like, I think I wear this in like every video, but okay, whatever. So there's that. The other thing that I need to start talking about is how I feel about this week's message. <laughs> like, I'm a little nervous, um, mostly because I hope I do the message justice. So when I'm getting ready to record these for you guys, uh, I sit and I just kind of feel what needs to be discussed, what needs to be brought forward. Now, the, I don't know if I can just put this in simplest terms, so hang with me. I'm going to try to make this concise, but it's about voice. It's about how we are now interacting with each other as human beings and recognizing that everyone has their soul's contract. Everybody has a personality. Everybody has a filter and a lens with which they perceive the world. Now, I found myself yesterday, there's so many upsetting things coming out and it has to do with how we treat one another and the hatred in this world, the hatred. And this news story popped up and I'm reading the comments. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. I'm reading the comments. And it just seemed like certain people who were being bullies, they were being nasty, they were dominating the conversation. And not only is that not good because you don't get the full, like everybody's perspective on it, but I knew that there were people that felt like maybe they couldn't have a voice in this conversation because what's the one thing that we're getting trained, especially in this day and age, to do? Let it go. Law of attraction, it's a thing. Everybody puts it in the comments. It happens every week. <laughs> Like, you know, the simplistic view of law of attraction. And I'm not saying that we should engage in every single fight, right? But sometimes when someone is causing harm, and you might go, well, how are they causing harm with their comments? I don't want to get into it. Um, but it was, getting, it was getting nasty. It was just getting nasty. And people who were trying to express their opinion, they were getting trampled on. And if you've been following me for any bit of time, you know, one of my things as a human being is always wanting to jump in and help even if nobody asked me to. I know, it's something I gotta work on, okay? Okay, <laughs> okay? But I don't know, I, I just felt like, you know what, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of people dominating the conversation. And I had a moment, I had a very human moment, and I was snarky, okay? <laughs> I admit it, I'm always very transparent with you guys. I'm gonna let you know, I'm not one of those practitioners that just pretends like I've got all the answers and I'm light, airy, fairy, fluffy, love and light, you know, all that stuff. We still have a human existence to get through. And I'm always a little, like, I back away from people who pretend like they are always in a state of peace. If that were true, you wouldn't be in a human body. So I don't know, that was just a little side thing. So. I couldn't help it. I was just, I'll admit, I was just frustrated. I was just frustrated. And I left a comment on this one news story. And I'm like, you know what? I'm amazed at how many experts there are out there in medicine and science. And <laughs> how do y'all know what's going on? Nobody knows what's going on. Not even the experts know what's going on. And again, it wasn't, yeah, I'm going to admit to it, it wasn't the nicest comment. And man, I realized and remembered why people don't. <laughs> Why people do stand back and get quiet because oof, here they came, just feeding frenzy. I'm not a victim. I asked for it. I walked right into it. But um, I, you know, you know, I woke up this morning and as I was saying, you know, I'm getting ready for the message and everything, and that kept coming up. And I was like, are 
okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had a moment. I'm, I'm through it. I'm sorry. I'm sending love to those people. I didn't. I didn't mean to start anything, and I, I actually felt the presence of Archangel Gabriel quite strongly. And Gabriel, the message that was coming through was no talk about that. Talk about that, because first of all, I think a lot of you out there need to hear that it's okay. <laughs> Be ready for it, but it's okay to speak up for yourselves um, and to speak your peace. And we don't need to let bullies limit us on how we function in our lives. I mean, have you ever been out and about and you've got somebody who is, I, I, you know, I've explained this before as an example, you know, I've had people be very, very careless on the road and almost cause an accident. And why? Because they need a sense of power, right? And then continue to harass because they didn't get enough of a rise out of you. And I know that's what people are talking about when they're like, don't engage. I, I'm not stupid, okay? I got it. Um, but there is this balance here that we're learning. First of all, finding your voice involves watching. We always say, now I, got, I allowed myself to get invested yesterday for a moment. And I realized it right away. And then I popped back out of it. But to observe without getting invested. But to watch how we are getting treated. How we treat others and how we are being treated. And what have we turned a blind eye to? Okay. Oh, pick anything. There's so many things we could talk about in this video. What do we turn a blind eye to? So that needs to be looked at and finding our voice, you're going to make mistakes. I made a mistake yesterday. Okay. And I'm sharing that with you. Um, this is the Angel Souls family here. We can be real with each other. And anybody who wants to twist that and use that against people later when they're just being authentic and honest and you want to go honor people who aren't being honest, that's your choice. But we can choose to not buy into that, right? So we are in troubled times, <laughs> to say the least. And I'm laughing out of dis disbelief, like just complete disbelief. But so every time we turn around, there's something else coming up. So what I think what we're getting taught here is to observe, as I said, observe without trying not to get invested. Do not as I do. Um, but know when to speak up and be prepared to observe further when there's a response. Okay. Again, I'm learning this with you. So we are learning to channel our energies. Again, we're going to make mistakes. You're going to have a moment where you do lash out at somebody or you have a difference of opinion. Um, I was told that because I had a difference of opinion with somebody else, um, that that's a debate and that I had better, I better not express my opinion until I'm ready to back up my opinion. And that's bizarre to me. Um, people, we should all feel free to come forward and say what we have to say. And everybody, if we respected and loved one another, we could have a conversation, but instead everybody wants to turn everything into a debate. We have been talking for a long time that as, as all this gets rolling, as we come into this cracking open and this awakening that all the toxicity is going to come up to the surface. We're going to see people acting out. We're going to see people operating from a collapsing ego consciousness. It's collapsing. It's dysfunctional. It has, it's smoking. The gears are stuck, you know, however you want to see it. And it's no better in the spiritual community. I say this all the time. Because we come up with these things that we're like, well, here's the fix. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a fix. But what is the real work that we've done? Oh, well, if you were truly spiritual, you got to love statements that start like that. If you're truly spiritual, if your vibration is truly high, oh, you're so heavy, you're so dark, you're so blue, you know, you wouldn't have anything bad happen to you. That's not true. <laughs> that is not true okay we are here to process and learn and it's gonna get messy right so you know for, again from that um sort of dysfunctional you're how do i want to say this it's not like the ego was bad it wasn't meant to be bad it was meant to protect us but it's just now it's just gotten so clogged up that the sparks are flying and um i don't know what's going to happen next but it's very hurtful, it's very scary, and we are being asked to keep trying to find our voice in the chaos and to roll with whatever your responses are. As I was given that example about, you know, I woke up feeling like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have engaged. This feeling came over me of, it's okay, you're learning. And 
people who, it's like having the Instagram life, right? Where everybody poses as if they're perfect, but they're not. Um, I've had plenty, you guys, you guys know I lived in Los Angeles in my early 20s, and I actually met, I should, <laughs> I'm not going to name names, I actually met somebody who's a very um, prominent spiritual practitioner and spiritual author, and whoa, whoa, and the way I met this person was because I was working for an accountancy, and her accountant that, that was she was a client and so I would deal with her often and she was not a nice person as a matter of fact like I was scared of her and then when I found out what she did for a living I'm like okay now if she's feisty on stage respect for that okay if you're authentically you all the time <laughs> like um yeah when you're you know you don't want to like lay all your garbage out on the stage I suppose but like you know it was just that she had two very distinct personalities she had one in real life and then the persona she had as a spiritual practitioner and this is one of those things that I try to bring to the table be be careful with what seems you know like it's real all of that is crumbling all of the facades are coming down. People are going to pan panic. They're going to panic. <laughs> I had an accent all of a sudden. <laughs> People are going to start to panic and they're going to start grabbing at the pieces. And this has been going on for a long time. I don't think this is an overnight process, but um, it's going to keep continuing. And we're going to start seeing how our own fears are coming up to the surface. I realized I had a fear of not having a voice. I had a fear of being bossed around. And I think that's why a lot of people are reacting right now. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, so, okay, so those people I was arguing with yesterday, we're all kind of in the same boat. <laughs> we're just taking, you know, different approaches, I get. Well, no, kind of taking the same approach, but having different things to say. Anyway, finding our authentic voice, being patient with ourselves, realizing this is just a part of getting to another place and... Just, we'll try to mitigate the hate, I guess, okay? The the deeper message here that we got to go into now, we, so we set it up, right? So there's that. You're like, oh my God, that wasn't it? No, it wasn't it. We cannot let more people die before we start realizing what's going on. And I'm being um, purposefully vague about that, not because I'm interested in silence, or anything like that, but because that can apply to so many different things. And if I'm not careful, here we go. Uh, if, if, we're, if we're not careful about what we say in our YouTube videos, they can get wiped off completely and then nobody hears anything. Okay. Not like I'm coming in with the Holy Grail message. Like, <laughs> not like I'm the end all be all with messages, but, um, you know, it's, it's the part that I can contribute for whatever it's worth to people out there. So, we need to start standing up for one another. And when we see others who are exposing themselves, remember what I said, there is a societal illness that is going on. Um, and that is, you know, I, I can't do it let down like this. It's like being overly simplistic. And I'm not an expert in, in psychology. I'm not a licensed psychologist. So what do I know? But, um, but it feels like, so, you know, the spectrum of narcissism, we talk about that all the time, sociopathy, psychopathy, um, and that being dwindled down. Again, I'm no expert, check with the experts, but what it feels like, I have to say that, what it feels like to me and my belief is that, um, my belief from those feelings is that it starts with a child. That's why I'm so big on like protect the kids, guys. Because first of all, kids are innocent and they don't deserve that. They deserve all the love in the world. And for every child out there, I hope you feel me sending you love every single night. Because I may not have had a kid out of my own womb, but I see every child out there that wants a mom, I'll, I'll be your mom. Even if I never get to meet you, I will be your mom. I'm here for you and I love you. Um, and that's where it starts. That's where it starts. And we have to make sure that these kids are loved. Now... You will come across, and I've had, and I won't bore you with the example because I've already bored you with <laughs> too many examples here, but I was just thinking this morning about how there was this one guy that I came across, and he was um, coming off in a very misogynistic manner and um, being, 
he just had kind of an evil feel about him. And it was weird for a split second, something broke in him. And it was like this wounded child started to come out. And that's when I had one of the most profound understandings of, and, and I started seeing flashes of what I imagined his childhood to be like. And it broke my heart. I mean, it broke my heart. And yeah, that's how they get you. Be careful when they seal back up and then they come back in. But the, I think there's truth. There's, there was a moment of truth that came out and that was this person and a lot of people get conditioned at a young age that they're worthless. Maybe they're getting hit. Maybe they're getting abused in other ways. Again, I want to be careful about what I say here. Um, and then they grow up in the hate. And they grow up trying to have power over one another. And uh, we can get sucked into that. We really can. So that's the message for that part of it. I'm going to pull some cards because we love color. We love artwork. We love the energy of words, right? So I'm going to do that. Um, I would like to open this up. That's as much of the message as, that I've gotten about that. I hope I've explained it well enough so it makes sense. Um, I would encourage conversation. I don't think there's much help in debate because debate implies that someone's trying to be more right over someone else. And I would rather us be a family that we are here. We souls have come together. Um, and, I, and I also want to not encourage like this um, false like, you know, love and light thing. Let's get into it. Let's have a real conversation. What are the things that hurt your heart? What are the things that you've always wanted to say, but you never felt like you could because somehow it was going to make you less spiritual or somehow it was going to make you seem bitter. That's a big one. When people start trying to express how they feel, people are like, oh my God, you're so bitter. You're so jaded. You're so, let's reserve the judgment. Say what you have to say with love um, and, and leave it down below. And let's all be loving and supportive of one another. And let's have a conversation. All right. As always, this is a criticism that I get on my YouTube channel. People say, oh my God, she, you know, I left a comment and she erased it. Half the time, I don't even know who you are. Okay. I'm just being real with you. People accuse me of blocking them and stuff. I'm like, I've never seen your name before in my life. <laughs> and I only block people when I know they're coming with their poison. And usually they'll show themselves right away. And if you seem like, I mean, bottom line, if you seem like a troll, I'm not going to let you use my platform to do whatever that thing is that you want to do. That's not going to happen. But I'm talking for like the Angel Souls family. If you want to come and have your discussions in the comment section down below, of course, as I've already posted on YouTube, uh, nurses, doctors, first responders, um, anybody who needs some emotional support right now, this, this is, get it here. Okay. Like we're all here for you. And, um, if you're getting off of a shift and you're super tired, but you have your phone, you want to leave a comment, let us know that you're there so that we can lift you up. <laughs> right? Not that you're falling that, you know, you need us to like, you know, fly on our wings kind of weird thing, but like, you know what I'm saying? You know? But you know, I mean, we're all human and we're here for you. Okay. So there's that. Let me get the cards. Ah. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh. All right, so let's see what we have. All right, so the first card out we have is color. Okay, so this is a very interesting card every time it comes out because it could be taken in so many different ways. Did I just say because we love color and we love words? <laughs> Weird. All right, this is how you color your life. All right, this is how, this is the perspective. This is um, what lens, I, I think like rose colored glasses. And when I think of this card coming up in the context of this message, um, you know, if we are in denial, about what's going on. I was talking about human trafficking. Okay. That's a big one. I mean, you could go on and on and on again. I, I have to be careful with what I, you guys know what I'm saying. You feel me. Um, you know what the events have been. If I put it in here, this video could maybe get taken down and then nobody hears it. Right. As I said, but this color card says you are in charge here of what you want your life to be right? This also talks about finding your happiness. This also talks about not pushing away allies. This talks about uh, not being afraid 
to allow people in. Now that's probably not what the book says. I'm just, I'm going by what it feels like, right? In the, again, in the context of this message. This also feels like a peaceful retreat a little bit, which seems contradictory to what we were saying. <laughs> we're saying, hey, don't back off, get in there and fight. We're not telling you to fight, but um, to be aware, right? And to find your voice, right? And the right expression for you. But I think what this is saying is like having that peaceful realization of, okay, this is where we're at, but I don't have to go into despair over it. We can make choices. We can choose to open our hearts. We can choose to um, process things as they come forward, right? Not push things away. And, you know, and I want to send out a little message to spiritual practitioners out there. Be more honest. I know some of you. I know some of you. I know you don't have good days all the time. You're beautiful as you are, and it's okay. You're afraid your success isn't going to be there because you don't become what everybody wants you to become so that they're more comfortable. The way people perceive us is not the way we are. It's time for honesty. Let us see you. I don't know. I, am I alone in thinking like when somebody comes out and they're very, very honest, um, doesn't that lift your heart? Doesn't it make you feel bonded to them? I remember, um, who's the star of Outlander? Sam Hugan? Am I saying his name right? Um, I think, wasn't he the one that got on social media and was like, hey, um, he's not a spiritual practitioner. I don't think he's an actor. But he came out and was like, hey, people are like getting bullying. And it, it's rough. Now, he's this big, like, tough-looking guy, right? a celebrity. And when he came out and his honesty about that, I was like, good for you. Good for you. Because, you know, just because you're a man doesn't mean you don't have feelings. And just because you're an actor doesn't, and you're a celebrity and you're on a very popular show, it doesn't mean that nothing bothers you, right? That warmed my heart. And I felt like it was even more important coming out of him. You know, it all, all that example really works, right? <laughs> As I said, you know, big muscular tough guy has feelings. Imagine that, you know, maybe we need to honor that a little bit more. Sorry, so coming back to the color card here, you're figuring out, it's, it's going to be a different message for each person out there, right? So um, do you look through the world through rose-colored glasses? Or does the world always have kind of a dingy tone about it? I, I get into that space sometimes where I, I see how people are responding to things or I see somebody being rude or inconsiderate of somebody else. It bothers me. It bothers me. And it's not that I'm self-righteous. I don't know why it's like that. Sometimes I wish I wasn't programmed to see everything and to feel it. You know, I'd, I'd like a break every once in a while. <laughs> Comment down below if you're the same way. Um, but it's, it's testing us about how what shades do we see the world in and how does that express through us? Right? Okay. I don't know that I'm saying that right, but <laughs> let's move on. Here's Gabriel. Here's Gabriel. <laughs> the messenger. Yes. What kind of message are we putting out into the world? What kind of message are we putting out into the world when we turn our head, whether it's from child abuse or someone who is, you know, you know, racially being discriminated against or... Again, I got to be careful. You know what I'm talking about. The messenger comes forward and says, what is the message you're putting out into the world? Your message comes through your actions as well. The message I put out into the world last night was that I was a snarky, self-righteous little so-and-so. Um, that was me in that moment, but that's not who I am as a person. And I'm still kind of like, okay, I need to reevaluate. <laughs> so... Who do you want to be? What message are you putting out there? And what is your voice? The messenger is all about finding your authentic voice, being you, being authentic through your actions, being authentic uh, and honest with yourself about the areas that maybe you want to look at and improve. All right, so I think that's good on that one. Let's see what else, what other parts of the story we have here. Oh, you can't see because my big fingers there and all the glare and everything little children. This is, I'm sorry, usually I think in the book it says, because I don't usually read the book, sorry authors, but I think I read this one one time, and it's something about finding your innocence and um, 
you know, kind of getting uplifted and seeing the world as if you're seeing the world through the eyes of a child. I think, though, that this has to do, again, in the context of our previous message, uh, this has to do with watching out for the little children. And that means your inner child as well. A lot of times when we're getting into those arguments with people, it is a wounded child that's coming out. My wounded child came out and was like, I'm tired of people telling me I'm not allowed to talk. I know y'all are like, <laughs> Michelle, you say whatever you want. Yeah, when I'm alone in a room with my camera, because no one can stop me. But there could be repercussions when it goes up and people want to fight me. And what, you know, there's always going to, it always feels like there's potential for backlash. And my little child, my, that wounded part of me, not that my whole inner child is wounded, but I'm just saying there was a part that was coming out wanting to fight other people's inner children. We gotta look at that. <laughs> we gotta look at that. Uh, and, and allow ourselves to come back into that innocence. But I don't know that, I wanna make this clear. I don't know that it's a snap thing that you can just force yourself into. It's coming up because it's teaching us something. It's giving us a message, right? About how we bring our wounding into the world. And that's the message, right? That's the messenger. What kind of messengers are we? What are we bringing? Are we bringing hate? Are we bringing hurt? Are we bringing anger and prejudice and judgment and, you know, all of these things? Are we bringing self-righteousness? What are we doing? And can we be better with one another? Can we love and accept each other? It's not an easy thing. I know, we get taught. Yes, it is. You, law of attraction, it's everything. It's putting a Band-Aid on a big gaping wound to just explain it away with little catchphrases and, you know, anyway. <laughs> Didn't this come, I don't remember the cards from last week. Mythic reality. I feel like this keeps coming up a ton, okay, where again, we have been lulled into false promises. We have been lulled into a way of thinking, a brainwashing, um, even in the way we respond to things. Because I would love to believe that as human beings, our innate response to everything would be with love, right? But sometimes that's not, that's not real. You know what? When someone is making me feel like I'm in danger... Do you hear that wind? Oh my goodness. <laughs> when someone makes me feel like I'm in danger, I'm not real, you know, like, I'm just going to give it to you straight. I'm not sitting here like, love and light. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm like, ready, you know, the adrenaline's going. I'm like, do I need to protect myself? Because I will, right? So there's a lot breaking open around this mythic reality. And part of that will be for us as individuals, you know, like what, what have we been conditioned to think? I was just thinking of this example last night where I remember a child from elementary school who I had a crush on. <laughs> His name was Eric. I had such a crush on him. And he went off. Uh, I can't remember if he went off to L.A. with his cousin or his cousin. I don't remember. But anyway, he ended up getting spending a summer with an older cousin. And this older cousin had a lot of prejudice and a lot of hate and a lot of anger. And he taught this to Eric and I think we were okay I don't remember seven eight years old something like that so over the course of a summer this beautiful child who was a very good friend of mine ended up coming back to school hateful and verbally abusive and pushing everybody away who he pushed away all his friends because this cousin said that he shouldn't like certain people I lost my friend and a potential boyfriend. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I ended up losing a friend. I ended up losing a friend. And he lost a lot of friends because all these kids didn't know what to do with him. Like he was just so hateful and mean. And he became a bully. He became a straight up bully. So let's not do that to the kids. All right. What messages are we giving to the children? Are we pumping a mythic reality into the kids? Are we still doing that to our own inner children? And even if we ex experienced an abusive childhood, do we continue to abuse our own inner child by not letting him or her have a voice, 
by not allowing ourselves to process because we have been trained and taught that if you experience pain and that starts to express, then you're a bad person, right? A lot of messiness there. We've got to look at it. So the card that's coming out for the color card is Rose. Attractor relationship, the number is six. Now, um, six can be... <sighs> Six is the mode we're in right now. It's destruction, okay? It is weirdly a sacred number. I know people have their ways about that, but Rose is all about attracting in uh, blessings. And when it says attract a relationship, um, it's deeper than just finding a love partner. It's, it's deeper than that. This is completely tearing down the old way. It's tearing down what... They're saying how we relate to ourselves, for one, um, what we allow into our world. And this is, you know, just because someone takes an interest in you, comment down below if you ever grew up like, oh, you should, why don't you date this person? Because they like you, right? Maybe you're not feeling the same way, but everyone pressures you to just give in. I don't know. But this is saying you're learning how to um, discern what kind of uh, relationship would be right for you. If people are crossing your boundaries because they decided they're interested, but you're not really interested in that way, set the boundary, okay? Set the boundary. When we say attract a relationship, we want this to be a healthy dynamic, right? <laughs> and, and again, the energy of this is allowing the old structures to break down so that we can, the word is authentic. We talk about that all the time. It's kind of a buzzword now, um, but living very, very authentically and loving who you want to love, right? No matter what other people think about that. And as long as you're not hurting anybody, of course. But this feeling of blessings, there are blessings in the pain, which seems kind of weird, but there are blessings in the pain. There are realizations there in the hurt. Uh, and take it easy on yourself. If you have a moment, right, take it easy. It's different if somebody continues with the hate and they're just a hateful person you know again be discerning out there you don't want to just take whatever someone's dishing out set your boundaries but this is a big kind of evaluation week be observant maybe journal okay that's always a good activity to do to kind of process what's going on and if you end up having a moment too know that that's a part of you finding your voice and then think about how you responded where that came from, what needs to be looked at, and how can you move through, all right? Have the conversation in the comments down below. I hope I made sense. I don't know that I did. <laughs> but I am sending you all so much love and take care.